The galaxy burns. Untold devastation, unspeakable horrors, and warp-bound monstrosities stalk every sector. Our only salvation? A golden warrior. And it's up to me to paint him. No pressure there, then. Welcome to Hobby with Ollie, where today I get to paint up the new Primaris Commander Dante. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit excited about this. I've been crying out for a new Dante model for ages. I even had a go at kitbashing one of my own a few months ago. The results were not encouraging. Let's just say my kitbashing skills have come on a fair amount since then. It's maximum effort mode to get new Commander Dante all painted up. It's only fitting for the Warden of Imperium Nihilus. Let's start off with a building and my thoughts on the kit. Now, I'm not a Games Workshop partner or anything, so all my opinions are my own, but I do have to say that this kit is one of the best I've had the pleasure of working with for a while. All the parts go together easily, and it's even got little pegs for putting awkward parts on, so no fiddling around with grenades on legs. If you are a regular human being who can put models together in sub-assemblies, I recommend leaving the arms and the shoulder pads separate, as it will make painting a lot easier. However, for any veterans of the channel, you'll know that I'm completely incapable of building in sub-assemblies, I just prefer painting the whole model all at once, and then struggling through all the problems that causes. I gave the whole model a coat of white primer through the airbrush. Now most of this model is that fancy gold armour, so I wanted a way of getting maximum contrast with minimum effort. To this end, I opted for an undershade of purple ink. I sprayed this from below, hitting all the deepest shadows on the model, like the armpits, between the legs, and anywhere else where the light is not really going to hit. In opposition to this, I sprayed white from above in order to give a real gleam to the gold armour on the upward-facing panels. Once both of these layers were dry, I sprayed gold over the whole model, and I'm really pleased with the contrast it's managed to create. If you're trying this yourself, I would highly recommend a layer of varnish over the purple ink step, just because I think I had a bit of reactivation and I had to come back in with some gold in order to sort it out later. So save yourself the hassle, apply a layer of varnish first. Now it's on to the next stage, shading. As the purple undershade was cooling off the shadows of the model, the gold was very pale and cold. To warm this up, and also to give extra definition to areas like his glorious golden abs, I applied Reichland Flesh Shade into the recesses of the armour. I applied this with a small brush as a pin wash rather than an all over shade, though if you're in a hurry, a shade will probably do. To emphasise the cool shadows on the other side of the model, I applied some Druki Violet into the darker portions. Things like the underside of the legs and arms, where there's going to be shadow and no direct light. With the gold armour looking sufficiently swanky, I moved on to some base coats, starting with the webbing between his armour, which I base coated black. Now this model is absolutely covered in details, and one of those are the scrolls, the purity seals and oaths of moment that Dante is absolutely festooned with. So I started with these. Make sure if you're painting your Dante, you don't miss any, as I did actually have to come back in and sort one out a bit later. I started with a base coat of Vallejo Brown Sand. This was applied over the entirety of the scrolls. Next, I highlighted up with a 50-50 brown sand and dark sand mix. I applied this over about 90% of the previous base coat. For any beginner painters out there, do still go through this step because while it may seem like you're covering up all your previous work and it seems like you could just jump straight to that colour, all paints are slightly transparent, so you want to make sure that you are getting a good base layer before you apply your next coat. Following this same methodology, I applied pure dark sand towards the tops of the scrolls. This was applied as sort of a heavy edge highlight. Lastly, I used dark sand and off-white in a mix as an edge highlight, so this was only on the sort of folds in the scrolls and the top sections that were closest to the light source. I also applied a sort of jagged edge highlight lines to the tops. As these are not metal pieces or armour panels, they're not going to be uniform, and so having these jagged lines indicates that the edge of the paper is roughed up by the atmosphere of whatever planet he's fighting on. Next, onto my super secret tech for getting the writing on those scrolls without having to mess around with transfers. Micro pens. Now, while you're not going to be able to get the level of control that a Golden Demon level painter might be able to with a paintbrush, you can still get pretty close, and it's so, so much easier and quicker. 
Get the smallest micro pen you can get, I used a size 005, and just apply random squiggles and lines all across the parchment. This is going to look quite stark at first, but just let it dry and it will be a little less prominent. Now I do say leave it to dry because just like a paint, these micro pens actually take quite a long time to dry. If you're applying a hairdryer between layers to speed things up, which I do highly recommend, you do still just need to give it a bit of a blast before you move on to your next colours. Now I also wrote to Dante onto the parchment on his shoulder pad, but I didn't get it 100% right first time. This is going to happen even when you're using the hack method of the micro pens. If this does happen to you, just wait for it to dry, cover it back up with your parchment colours and give it another go. If you are enjoying the video so far, hit the subscribe and the bell button below so you can be notified about when I'm releasing my next project. Speaking of my next project, a little teaser for you, there's going to be a lot of white in that project, and that's actually the colour we're going to move on to now with Dante. Give me your best guesses for what you think that project might be in the comments down below, and while you're there, tell me what projects you're working on as 10th edition inevitably draws closer. For the recipe for the white, I used sky grey as a base coat. It's important when painting white not to be tempted to start from a white colour. Instead you want to start from a grey, so it gives you somewhere to highlight up towards. With my sky grey applied, I was very careful with applying a 50-50 mix of sky grey and cold white. This was focused onto the top portions of the wings, as well as the edges of the feathers. If you are careful, you don't actually need to apply a shade, as the grey is going to remain in the deepest recesses of those wings. I applied the same methodology, this time with pure cold white. This was only focused around the very edges of the wings, and for the slightly smaller details, I did literally just run my brush over the tips of the wings in order to give them a bit of lightening around the tips. While I had the sky grey on my palette, I also highlighted the webbing between the armour panels. Now for a Blood Angel, Commander Dante is letting the side down on the red front. Fortunately, there are some areas that will look really great in a sort of deep wine red, which is what I'm going to apply to his loincloth and also later to his shoulder pad. I started from a base coat of Rhinox Hide, which I then highlighted up with a 50-50 Rhinox Hide and Mephiston Red mix. I also used this to glaze the transition between the Rhinox Hide and the more red colour. This is really important on things like satiny silk uh, that I imagine that Dante is going to be wearing. Only the best. As the transition should be really smooth, there's not going to be hatching or roughness to anything that he's wearing. I followed the same methodology with a layer of Mephiston Red, and that gives us this really deep red cloak which contrasts really nicely with that gold armour. Only a hero as decorated as Dante can actually afford proper foliage in the 41st millennium, so let's move on to his laurel wreaths and a few other details around the face. I started off the laurel wreath with a deep green, which I then highlighted up with intermediate green and deep green in a 50-50 mix. I used this right at the top of his head on the most upraised areas of the laurel wreath. Next we tackled the eyes, which I'm painting in a piercing blue as we see on the box art. Now I thought that I might get away with just painting my ice blue directly into the sockets. I'd previously shaded them with Reichland Flesh Shade, and you need to make sure you have a dark surround in order for the colour to really pop. However, the Reichland Flesh Shade wasn't really doing it, so I ended up coming back in with Agrax Earth Shade, and then another round of ice blue. I'm really happy with the final result, it does definitely look like he's fixing you with a piercing stare. Let's move on to a couple of bonus bits that I missed. I painted up the axe handle in the same red as the cloak, and also the mist scrolls that I mentioned earlier. While I paint up those missing parts, consider your hobby needs, and if you find yourself hankering for some tiny tanks, heroes of desperate far futures, or even painting and modelling supplies, check out my Element Games affiliate links in the description. Element Games offers a discount on Games Workshop products, and if you use the link below, I receive a small kickback on anything you purchase at no additional cost to you. Thanks very much for supporting the channel, and on with the paint job! Now as well as the face, the next most important thing on a model are going to be the armaments. For Dante, that means his Inferno Pistol, Perdition, and the Axe Mortalis. Now I base coated both of the business ends of these with black, and now let's focus on Perdition first. I painted silver on the front and rear portions of the gun. I then painted the white wing motif on both sides of the pistol. There are so many details across this model, make sure you don't miss any as you're going through. 
Given that this pistol is used to destroy the enemies of the Imperium, it's going to be seeing a lot of use. So we're going to have some discoloration from the intense heat of the melter burn coming out of the end. To indicate this, I started with a layer of Reichland Flesh Shade, which I glazed over pretty much all of the barrel of the gun. Once this was dry, I then used a layer of Druki Violet, which I applied over about two thirds of the area that I had used the Reichland Flesh Shade. Lastly, right near the tip of the muzzle, I used a dark Prussian blue, thinned down a lot to give a blue colour. Where the melter is absolutely hottest, it's going to have discoloured the most, and so we'll get that interesting sort of rainbow effect across the barrel. Now the gun is not quite finished as there are still some gems on either side, but we'll come to all of those at the same time in just a moment. I next took some time to base coat any silver parts across the model in gunmetal grey. I shaded over these with non-oil. These are parts like the vents on the backpack in particular, which are going to really take to this shade as they're going to be mostly hidden from the light. I then highlighted up with Vallejo Aluminium. With that Vallejo Aluminium on my palette, I used this to base coat all the gems. I then also applied chrome to the top sections of those gems, where again, they're going to be glinting in the light of reflected stars. Over these, I washed transparent red in order to give them that blood drop appearance, and then applied a layer of gloss varnish. Now at this point, they were a little bit too pink, so I came back in with a layer of Agrax Earthshade. I'd highly recommend that you do the same to really give them that deep, dark, blood red look. On to the main event, the Axe Mortalis. I was starting from a base coat of black, and I started with a layer of dark blue. I applied these in random arcs coming out of the conductor coils at the base of the axe. With the dark blue established, I then applied medium blue in a smaller area inside of those dark blue arcs. Next, it's time to bring the lightning. I learned from my previous mistakes and added just a little bit of ice blue into medium blue and used this as my first layer of lightning. I applied this in random sketchy patterns, making sure to have it arcing towards the edge of the axe. I added some more ice blue into the mix and then applied this to any corners where the lightning would be interacting with each other and storing up extra energy. I also used this colour to edge highlight the tip of the axe, which is where you really want all of that heretic smiting energy to be channeled. I used pure ice blue to hit any really fine areas and also on the corners of the axe head. I gave him a quick base with sand, primed grey and then dry brushed with a lighter grey and Lord Commander Dante is ready to walk and fly across the battlefields of the 41st millennium. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode of Hobby with Ollie. I'm really, really pleased with how this guy came out and I can't wait to get my first game with him here. In the meantime, there should be videos of mine cropping up on the screen for you to watch if you're interested in this kind of thing. And remember to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Until the next one, my name has been Ollie. This has been my hobby and I'll see you next time. <laughs>